Hi everybody, it's Amy from Winterwood Studio and I had several requests to do a video about why I left Etsy um, at the end of 2022 here a few months ago. So I am going to be talking about Etsy today and what happened and why I left even though I was making a full-time income on it and I will show you my numbers and everything like that so you can see everything and I'll be really transparent and I hope it helps somebody. So come on in and let's chat for a little bit. Okay, so I started my Etsy business in 2016. Um, before I started this channel as an artist, I was a trained jeweler and I worked as a jeweler. Um, I'm not gonna get into that. I'll link the video down below or up above if I can figure it out. <laughs> Um, but I used to work as a jeweler and then I went um, full-time self-employed on Etsy. I sold a little bit here and there um, to like, you know, locally and at art fairs and whatnot. But most of my money came from Etsy. I started my Etsy shop in 2016 and it did um, very well in 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. And then in the spring of 2020, it started to tank. Um, and they started adding on lots and lots of fees. And I will get into all of that and explain it all to you. I wrote down notes so I don't forget anything. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is show you guys uh, my actual numbers for my Etsy shop. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so here you can see my actual numbers on my Etsy shop. Um, the name of it was Winter Woods Jewelry um, and I made the majority of my money between 2016 and 2019 and then things started to go bad in 2020. Um, so in 2016 I didn't start until July. So it works out so I earned about 20,000 in 2017 and 2018 and about 10,000 in 2016 the year I just got started in the last few months it was up and around 18,000 in 2019 um 2020 2021 and 2022 my earns were nowhere near what they were um I think I earned maybe 3000 in 2020 and I think like 1500 in 2021 and then in um 2022 I was actually in the hole $1700 by the end of the year um and most of that was due to the way Etsy changed things and their fees and what they're doing now which we are going to talk about now Okay, so now that you've seen the actual numbers for my shop, um, you'll know that, so the majority of my income for those four or five years came from my shop uh, on Etsy. I was doing some in-person sales and local stuff and that was like another five to 10,000, but two thirds to three fourths of my income was coming from Etsy, uh, which is a mistake. <laughs> Don't do that. If you're doing that, stop it. <laughs> you have to find different ways to make income, otherwise you'll end up like me. <laughs> um, so what happened with Etsy was, and I wrote my little notes down so I don't screw up the numbers. Um, okay, so the numbers I showed you were my revenue. Um, it used to be that Etsy was a 20 cent listing fee and a 3.5% transaction fee. And that was it. They didn't charge anything else. Um, that's how it was, I think, when I started. Uh, so that's, you know, minimal. If you... Okay, so I have my calculator here. And with the old numbers, if you sold a pair of earrings for $50, 3.5% um, of $50 is $1.75. So it used to be you would be charged the dollar seventy-five and the twenty cents, and that was it. You kept everything else, um, and that was great. And you could charge shipping. So for a pair of earrings, my shipping was usually three dollars first class mail, mail, and then I would charge a dollar shipping fee to cover the cost of the jewelry boxes and the padded mailer envelopes, 
and that kind of stuff, um, packaging materials, and everything was covered and it was great and I was making tons of money. <laughs> well, tons of money for me. Maybe not tons of money for like a financial advisor, but for me it was good and combined with my husband's income we were totally comfortable. Um, and then Etsy started to make changes. <laughs> so the first thing that happened was that Etsy's transaction fee went up to six and a half percent. And then they added a payment processing fee, which was another 10%. <laughs> and then because my shop was making more than $10,000, they added the offsite ads fee. And if you're making more than $10,000, you cannot opt out of that. You, you can't. So that's another 15%. And then <laughs> they decided that everybody had to offer free shipping. So you had to roll the cost of the shipping into your item and say free shipping. If you did charge shipping, it was another 6.5% fee from the shipping cost that you charged. Um, and also you would get dinged in search and you would get knocked down farther in the search, search rankings. Um, okay, so those are all the fees, right? Um, and then remember that on top of that, from that revenue, that's before taxes. And then here's the kicker. <laughs> if you're making jewelry and you're buying gold and you're buying diamonds and you're buying uh, sapphires and all that stuff, guess what? It's not cheap. <laughs> and if you remember back in 2020 with all the craziness, the price of gold and diamonds and gems went through the roof. <laughs> so, all right, so let's talk about the actual numbers and I've got my notes in my calculator here so we can go through this. Okay, so let's say that you're making a pair of earrings. Um, let's say they're sterling silver and moonstone, which is a medium price gemstone, not too high, not too low. Um, and let's say it takes you four hours to make the earrings. So let's write that down. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm using my phone as the calculator, but I think my husband just texted me. Okay, so four hours for the earrings, and we're going to price the Moonstone and Sterling Silver earrings for $50. I normally would have priced them more like $75 or maybe even $100 before Etsy decided to allow manufacturing partners. <laughs> so, at some point there, they went from being completely handmade and vintage and they decided to start allowing manufacturing partners. The thing with that is you can say you designed something or whatever and then say you had, you sent your design to someone in China and they made the whole thing for you in China with very cheap labor and let's say you make a pair of similar silver earrings to what I would hand make for four hours and they get them for China, from China, for like $7 for their wholesale price, which is probably about what it was because I checked into it. Okay, so then they're selling them on Etsy for maybe $35 and they're making, you know, a bit of a profit. Okay, I don't know. I don't know those numbers for sure, but they're, they're, they're having it made in China. It's very, very cheap. It's much less um, then me buying the materials and then spending four hours of my precious time making the earrings. So, okay, they're sending the, selling them for very cheap. Suddenly Etsy is flooded with extremely cheap jewelry that I suddenly have to compete with as a handmade artisan. So I can choose to keep my prices the way they are, or I can lower them to be competitive. And at that point, Etsy was only charging, I wrote it down, they were charging a the 3.5% uh, transaction fee and the 20 cent listing fee. And that was it, that, that was all they were charging. So I lowered my prices to stay competitive. So instead of suddenly being like a 75 to $100 pair of earrings, I was suddenly selling them for more like 50 to $60. And for this example, we're going to say $50 um, because a lot of mine were actually priced at that and that's a reasonable 
easy number to do the math with. <laughs> okay, so let's say we've got a pair of $50 um, sil sterling silver and moonstone earrings. Okay, so the materials for that would run about $8 for the silver and about $7 for a pair of like four millimeter sized nice moonstone cabochons. Okay, so we're running about, let's round it up to $15 for materials. So there's $15 of materials in those earrings. Now, the self-employed taxes are 15.3%. So out of that $50, um, they're going to take $7.65 for taxes. So that's not my money. It's never my money. It's going straight to taxes. Okay, then... With Etsy's fees, their new transaction fee and payment processing fee, plus the 20 cent listing fee, that comes to $5.20. Okay, so we're at $15 for materials, $7.65 for taxes, and $5.20 and $5 for Etsy fees. Then there's the whole shipping issue. Okay, so a pair of earrings like that, $50 earrings, I would send first class mail. Sorry. <laughs> I would send it first class mail. Um, and that would run about... <laughs> I would send it first class mail. So that would run somewhere between 3 and $4, let's say. Let's, let's round it down to 3 We'll be nice. We'll round it down to 3 So $3 in shipping plus another dollar for the shipping envelope and the, the jewelry box I would ship it in and the little plastic bags and all that, another dollar for packaging materials. And then for a pair of earrings, First Class Mail does not have any shipping insurance. So it's very, very important if you're selling on Etsy to buy shipping insurance. <laughs> if by any chance your package gets lost between the time that it leaves your house and gets to your buyer, I mean, it's your responsibility. It, technically, Etsy says you're not responsible if the package doesn't get there, but no buyer is going to say, I don't have my item and I don't have my money. I'm okay with that. So if it didn't get there, you would have to refund them their money. So you buy shipping insurance, which is another $1.50. So with the mailer, the shipping insurance, and the actual shipping, that's above another $5.50 in shipping. Okay, now here's the kicker. Then Etsy decides to do the off-site ads, which as we previously said is if you're earning more than $10,000 a year, which I was, you cannot opt out. Okay, so if you're if you're under ten thousand, you pay fifteen percent. If you're over ten thousand, it's another twelve percent. So twelve percent of fifty dollars is another six dollars. Okay. So we've got now our materials, our taxes, the Etsy um, fees, the shipping cost, and. So let's let's do it first without the offsite ads. Okay, so we've lowered our price on our earrings to fifty dollars to stay competitive with all the uh, manufacturing partners. So fifty dollars minus fifteen in materials, minus seven dollars and sixty-five cents in taxes, minus five dollars and twenty cents in Etsy fees, minus our five dollars and fifty cents in shipping. Okay. That leaves you with only $16.65 left as profit for your four hours of work you put into these silver earrings. Okay, so you've got $16.65. What happens when Etsy suddenly says their off-site ad was what had that led to that purchase? Okay, so that would be another 12%. So 50 times 12... That's $6, so $16.65 minus $6, ooh, $16.65 minus $6 equals, you're left with $10.65 of profit on a pair of silver earrings that it took you four hours to make. 
All right, so let's take our $10.65 divided by four hours. You are working for $2.67 an hour. That's what you're making, $2.67 an hour. Okay. Okay, so now here's the thing. At the end, I, and I, this happened I think four or five times, I was selling raw black diamond and gold non-traditional engagement rings. And I was selling them for, I think, $400 to be competitive. And I had probably cut, I did probably cut it down too low to try to stay competitive. Four times near the end, I end up ended up working, and they were super hard to make. <clears throat> they would take me all day. Like it was an eight hour eight hour process. I would hand build the frame um, for a specific stone to make sure it fit because they were raw stones. They weren't calibrated. They weren't all the same size. I had to hand build the frame for that exact stone, and then set the stone, polish it. You know all of that. It was an eight hour process for those rings. Four times. Here, let me shut that off so it stops doing that. So four times near the end there, I sold one of those rings. And all four times, Etsy said that the purchase came from an off-site ad. There's no way to, for you to track it. There's no way to prove that it came from an off-site ad. Uh, and I think... I, I don't remember exactly, so I'm not sure if this is exactly right, but the, the lead time from the time they click to the time they make the purchase, I remember being ridiculously long. Like if they clicked on that link and then in any time in the next month bought that ring, they would charge you for the ad price, uh, which is just for comparison. If you are doing Amazon affiliate marketing where you share links of products you'd like and someone clicks that link, if they don't buy the product within 24 hours of clicking that link, you get nothing. <laughs> so the whole 30 day thing, which I'm like 85% sure I'm that's how long it was. I could probably go and check, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, uh, is ridiculously long compared to everybody else. It was clearly in Etsy's favor. Um, yeah, but so four times near the end there, they said that one of those rings was from an off-site ad. And because I had it priced lower to be competitive, that last 12% ate up all the profit. I actually lost money on making those rings and shipping them out. Uh, I was working for less than free. I ended up, I think both of them, I ended up losing something like $50 for them. So I ended up losing well, four times 50 is $200. I ended up losing $200 for those rings and working for four days at eight hours a day and actually losing money. And when that happened the fourth time near the end of 2022, that's when I shut my shop. Um, so that's my experience as a jeweler on Etsy. As I said before, I do still have a art shop up on there that I started but never really put any work into. I think I have like eight things in it. I would like to sell prints and my original artwork. I just don't know if Etsy is the right place for me anymore, especially if you're selling original artwork like, you know, you know, a canvas painting, you're going to run into that whole shipping issue and, and you know, oil paints are expensive, canvas, canvases are expensive. I think maybe if you were selling like a digital item, a digital download or something, it wouldn't be so bad. Um, and Etsy is still the biggest, I guess you could call it like a search engine for people who want to sell handmade items. It's much, much harder now with the manufacturing partners than it used to be. And there's a lot of very cheap competition. Um, honestly, I don't feel like the soul of Etsy is there anymore. It's become about money and how much they can make. And... Etsy was a wonderful place and I was so happy there for so long and it made me possible to be made it possible for me to be home with my kids when they're young and also as I've been dealing with my chronic illness 
Um, and I don't know what happened. I I don't know what happened there. I I know they got a new CEO and everything in there, but Etsy has changed. It's not what it was. It's still a very good place to get found, and if you don't have high operating costs and material costs, it is probably a, a great place to be. Um, there is a lot of work that goes into having a successful Etsy shop. There's a lot of SEO research and optimization. Um, there's a lot of trying to stay on top of trends and doing a lot of research to find the trends before everybody is on them. Then you have to deal with people copying your designs when they realize it's a trend and you've already got designs out. I don't, it was a whole thing. Um, yeah, so that's my, that's my experience with Etsy. That's why I'm not on there anymore. I would like to find a way to, to sell my prints and my original art. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I have enough of a following to drive traffic to like a Squarespace or whatever the options are nowadays. Um, yeah. So if you have any experience selling your, your own stuff, not on Etsy, I'd love it if you'd drop a comment or leave some advice down below. Um, I really, I'm not sure what to do at this point as far as selling my art and prints and things. Um, I could also at some point do a video about how I did become successful in Etsy, although, you know, I don't know how much their, their algorithm for their SEO has changed. What I did worked up until 2020. I mean, it was st I was still getting the views and the traffic and the, and the orders. It just, I wasn't making profit anymore. So I guess it worked all the way up through till last year as far as being optimized to be found in search. Um, I could talk about that, do a video about that if you want. Uh, Etsy's not really my future anymore, but I could talk about it. So if you want that to be made at some future point, drop that in the comments below as well. Um, and there's a tutorial coming on Sunday today. The day this goes up should be Friday. So Sunday, there's go the Sunday right after, there's going to be the tutorial for the full length pastel rose drawing going up. And if you find my content helpful at all or entertaining, <laughs> please feel free to like and subscribe. I think I'm up to 400 subscribers now, so yay! So uh, thanks for everybody who's subscribed or showing support. I really do appreciate it. And I will be back next time to talk to you all again. Have a great day. Bye.